We got a very practical topic for you today. How can you figure out what kind of salary you're gonna get from a company that hires you for a job? We're gonna explore that topic using summary statistics for quantitative data. Today's lessons on measures of center and spread, and today's all about the big bucks. Specifically, how can you tell how much you're really gonna make at a company that offers you a job? So first we're gonna talk about measures of center. And specifically, we're gonna be talking about this data set. This is a data set of 12 salaries at a company that has 12 employees. And the salaries are in thousands of dollars. So for example, the first employee listed has a salary of $39,000. The second one listed has a salary of $34,000, et cetera, et cetera. One common measure center for quantitative data like this is to find the mean or the average. And the mean or the average is often represented in these variables, X bar, X with a bar on top of it, or mu. The formula for the mean is the sum of all the data values divided by the number of data points, or n. And if you want to put that in mathematical notation terms, it's the sum, sigma, of all our data divided by n, the sample size. Uh, so in this case, I can add up all the salaries in thousands of dollars and divide it by 12, because there are 12 salaries for the 12 employees at this company. So I'm going to add those up. If you add up all those salaries, you get 601 divided by the 12 salaries of the data set. The average salary is 50.1 or $50,100 in raw dollar terms. Another measure of center that's common is to find the median. And the first step to find the median of a data set is you line up your data in order from smallest to largest. And then you start crossing off. So I'm going to cross off the lowest data value, which is $29,000. I'm going to cross off the highest data value, which is $185,000 as a salary. I'm going to keep on crossing off one by one as we approach the central data values. In this case, I'm stuck at the end between two central data values, a salary of $34,000 and a salary of $35,000. When you're stuck between two data values, which happens if your data set has an even number of data values, what you're going to do is add those values up and divide by two. That's going to get you the midpoint between those two data values, which is the true median for your data set. When that happens, you add up, divide by two, we get a salary of $34,500 is the median. So the mean salary is $50,100. The median salary is $34,500. And a question that I want you to ponder on, we're going to cover it more later, but one question to think about at this point is, imagine the boss of this company is trying to hire you. She says that, look, our typical salary is $50,100, which is the mean. Trying to hire you says, look, our typical salary is $50,100. In your mind, is this misleading? Why or why not? So ponder that as we continue forward. Now, some subtleties about calculating the meeting is that we have to find the position of that middle of a data set. And for an odd number of data values versus the even number of data values in a data set, you're going to see different behavior. So here are two data sets, one with five values and one with four values. So the first data set has an odd number of data values. The second data set has an even number of data values. To find the median in the first data set, cross out, cross out the more extreme values until you get to that middle one. In this case, we have a single middle value, 47 is the median of that first data set. When you try and do the same thing with my small even data set, I'm gonna cross out the most extreme, but then I'm left between two in the center. It's ambiguous. And so as I did before, I'm gonna find the midpoint by adding up those central data values and then dividing by two. The midpoint between 18 and 48 is 33. So 33 is the median of the second data set. 47 was the median of the first one. Now, one shortcut to do this, so you don't have to do it cross out, cross out, cross out for large data sets, is to find the middle position of a data set. You can take the number of data values n, add one to it, and then divide by two. So in this case, my first data set had five data values. I'm going to do five plus one over two. Five plus one is six. Divide that by two is three. So the third data value, in this case 47, is the middle position. It is the median, and that is the case here as we saw before. For the second data set, I can take the number of data values, 4. I'm going to add 1 to it. So that's 5. Divide that by 2. That gives us the middle position of 2.5, which signals to us that the middle position in this data set is halfway between the second value and the third value, the midpoint between the second and third value. As you can see, that's what we had to do here. We have to find the midpoint between the second and third value. That's a helpful trick for when you have a data set with a lot more values and don't want to just do cross off, cross off, cross off. You can find the middle position directly using this formula. Now, often we'll get presented a larger data set in the form of a graphic and often in the form of a histogram. 
So this here is a histogram of ACT scores among a group of students. Um, and when you wanna find the median in a histogram, you should follow a step-by-step -step process as follows. So one, we should count the frequencies in the histogram to find the number of data values in the data set. So the heights of a histogram represent how many data values fall in each bucket. So in this case, there were two, that's the height of that first bar, two ACT scores between nine and 12. There were three, that's the height of that bar, three ACT scores between 12 and 15, five between 15 and 18, et cetera, et cetera. So I can go ahead and add up all those heights to get the number of data values in each bin, and I get the total number of data values, which is 55. So there are 55 ACT scores, i.e. 55 students and their scores described in this data set. So now I can use that formula we developed, the number of the sample size plus one divided by two to identify the middle position for this data set. There are 55 values. I'm gonna add one, that's 56, divide by two to get the middle position, 28. So the 28th value, the 28th position in this data set is going to be the median. So I got to count up until I hit the 28th data value in my data set. So I'm going to count up the frequencies until I reach that central position. Now I can't count, I can't count up individual data values because histogram buckets are values, but I can count up the frequencies to get a sense of where I am along the distribution. So I'm going to count until I kind of reach the 28th data point, the middle position. So in this first bucket, I only have two data values. So I have two, it's not 28 yet. So I'm gonna go into the next one. And that next one, I have three data values in that bucket. There are three uh, ACT scores between 12 and 15. So, so far, counting from left to right, I've covered five ACT scores, two in the first bucket, three in the second one. There's five in the next bucket. So I have five from before plus the extra five. Now we have 10 data values we've covered. Add an extra seven for the next bucket. Now I've covered 17 data values. Add nine or more. Now I have 26 data values. And I finally get to the next one. That's nine. That gets to the 35th data value. So somewhere in this bucket, where we go from the 26th to the 35th, somewhere in that bucket is the 28th data value. And so I know that the median for this histogram is going to be in that bucket of ACT scores between 24 and 27. So I'm going to go ahead and report the interval of possible values for the median. We say the median ACT score is in this interval. It's somewhere greater than or equal to 24 and less than 27. Reminder that in histograms, the lower bound is an including bound, and the upper bound is an excluding bound. So the median is somewhere in that interval of SAT, ACT score, excuse me. So now let's talk about measures of spread. So I have my data set again, and we want to figure out how spread out these data values are, not just the central, but how spread out these values. One way to do that is to find the range. So you take the maximum, you subtract the minimum, and that gets you the range. In this case, the maximum was a salary of $185,000, the minimum was a salary of $29,000. Subtract them, I get a range of $156,000. The data range is $156,000 from the minimum to the maximum. Another common measure of spread is to get the standard deviation. So the mean in my data, as a reminder, was $50,100. So what I can try and do to figure out how distant these values are from the mean is, is get the differences between the data values and the mean. So in this case, my maximum, 185,000, was about 135,000 roughly away from the mean because I subtract 185 minus 50, that's what I get. Do the same thing for this one of 67, that's about $16,900 away from the mean. Do it for this one, we're actually below the mean now. So 32 minus 50, we're $18,000 roughly below the mean et cetera, et cetera. I can do this for all these data points. You'll see that some of them have the same distance as described here. So I have distances, differences from the mean here, and some of them are positive, some of them are negative. Now, maybe I wanna to try to find the average distance from the mean, and that will give me a sense of how typically spread out these values are from the mean. Problem with that is that if I take the average and I add up all these differences, we're gonna get some canceling out of the positive and negatives. The negatives are gonna cancel the positive and it's just not really gonna work out. So instead of finding the average distance from the mean, I'm gonna try and find the typical distance from the mean. And the way we do that is like this. We take all those differences and we're gonna square them. The reason we square them is to get rid of the negatives. So we don't have to worry about the negatives anymore. We sum up all these squared differences. So I'm gonna get this big sum, which is just taking all the, the differences squared and adding them all together. And I'm gonna divide by n minus one. It's similar to taking an average, but instead of uh, summing up just the raw values, I'm summing up the squared values. 
And instead of dividing by n, I'm dividing by n minus 1. The reason we're dividing by n minus 1 instead of dividing by n is very complicated. It has to do with something called degrees of freedom. It's outside the scope of this part of our course. Um, but just take it for my word. It's, there's, a, there's a reason we do this, and it's similar to finding the average in finding dividing by n, but there's um, complex reasons why we do n minus 1. So I, there were 12 data points on my data set. Minus 1 is 11 data points. So I get this number. And then at the very end, I square root. So I've divided all my square distance differences by 11. I take the square root to cancel out the squaring I did originally. I get 43.61. The way we can interpret this 43.61 is that this is the typical distance from the mean. I've kind of gotten something similar to an average. I've square rooted to get rid of the squaring. This is the typical distance from the mean. So the salaries in this data set are typically $43,610 away from the mean. If you walk away with anything from this lesson on standard deviation, don't worry too much about the calculation. You'll never have to do it by hand. Just remember this interpretation, the typical distance from the mean. Standard deviation shows how typically distant the data values in the data set are from the mean, which in this case, they tend to be about $43,000 away from the mean. And here's the formal formula for it right here. Now, one last measure, measure of spread that I want to show you is called the interquartile range. So the interquartile range, you take the median, and you're going to take the medians now of the lower half of your data and the upper half of the data. So I take a median, I take the lower half of the data, I'm now going to find the median of that lower half of the data. So I'm going to cross out, cross out the extreme values until I find the median of that first half of the data. I call this quartile 1, or Q1. In this case, that's a value of 34. And then I can go ahead and do the same thing for my upper half of data. So I'm going to cross out the extreme values of the upper half, and I'm going to find the median of the upper half of data. That's my third quartile. And I had to find the midpoint, 39 plus 43, divided by 2, that's 41. So each quartile is essentially the median of its own half of data. And the interquartile range is simply the, dis the distance between Q3 and Q1. So I'm going to take my quartile 3, 41, I'm going to subtract my quartile 1 value, 34, and I get an interquartile range of 7, which in this case is represents $7,000. So my interquartile range for this data set is $7,000. So here are my three measures of spread. I got my range, I got my standard deviation, I got my IQR. And again, another question for you to consider for this later discussion, which measure in your mind, measure of spread, best represents the dip typical distance between salaries? And why do you think that? And finally, we're going to move on and talk about how to calculate these summary statistics, not by hand, which can be quite, quite cumbersome, but rather through using technology, specifically the TI-84. I'm going to show you the steps right now. You hit the stat key and then hit edit. Put all your data values in list one. So here are all my salary values. And then to find all the summary statistics we just came up with, you go stat, go over to calc on the right, one var stats. We're measuring one variable, which is the salary. So we're going to do one variable statistics. My list is list one. I'm going to go down to calculate, press calculate, and we get all the stats that we just derived. X bar is the mean, 50.1. Yep, that's what we got. SX is the standard deviation, 43.6. Yep, that's what we got. Sample size is 12. And then we have our minimum, first quartile, median, third quartile, maximum. So let's return back to those discussion questions that I previewed before. The boss is trying to help hire you with this company. She says, look, our typical salary is this. Is this misleading? Why or why not? And then which measure of spread is the more typical one? So we're talking about mean versus median being typical. We're talking about range, standard deviation, IQR being typical. What's going on here? What are your thoughts on these questions? 